Hello everyone and welcome to our next episode of Play to Earn Smasher Pass. Today we are looking at one of the most recent partners teaming up with Wombat 2 make the Play to Earn a lot better, a lot more fun. It's Tiny World. Tiny World, in essence, is a constellation of different games and uh, services that create your fantastic adventure in its fantasy world. You have over 100 heroes representing historical figures such as Romulus or, uh, for example, Badika. She was, uh, again, ancient British warrior, as well as some fictional characters, right? Like Robin Hood. So, without further ado, let's take a look at what you, as a player, can do in this game. So this is the main screen of the Tiny World game. You can access it via tinyworlds.io and you can, of course, as always, log in with your Wombat wallet. There is even a dedicated login option there. We also want to take a moment to thank Tiny Worlds once again for providing us demo resources so we could show you guys how the summoning mechanics work, how, for example, the uh, staking of the token works, and so on. So basically, the Kind of the earn aspect of Tiny World comes down to the NFTs that are represented by all these heroes, right? And the TINC token or TINK um, that is basically the main currency of this game. You can use TINK uh, to, for example, get some runes, some more heroes, etc. And you can earn it in many, many, many ways. Uh, we'll take a quick glance and everything that uh, this sort of a home portal has to offer, right? And then dive right into the game, the tiny kingdom. That is the main kind of game title in the tiny world universe. So for the earning aspect, we have the tiny world vault where you can put your NFTs on expeditions or whatnot, depending on their rarity, uh, Pardon me, depending on their power that uh, you can increase by consuming other NFTs, for example. And of course, the rarer the NFT, the more power that it has. You can basically mine the TNC token this way by sending the heroes that you don't want in your main lineup for Tiny Kingdom out on expeditions to get you more token. Then of course, there is the boost pool where you essentially can stake NFTs to increase your uh, sort of mining capabilities in the TNC BNB liquidity pool. You will be able to see all of your NFTs in here. Right now we don't have one. Why? Because we want to show you how to get one a bit later. And of course there's the marketplace where you can get uh, heroes from all the other players, right? Uh, you can get heroes, you can get mystery runes to summon those, or if you are, uh, let's say, a very performance-oriented player, you can go to the dashboard here um, see, to see what kind of best performing within a certain price range are out there for you to buy. But let's get back to the main screen here. You also have the tiny DAO where you can mine essentially the VTNC. Um, this token specifically gives you the governance right within the community 
um, to participate in the decision making and how essentially the game will be developing further, of course, not the entirety of its aspects, right, but uh, certain decisions are left to uh, the community. And of course, uh, as a governance member, you will be eligible to certain share of tokens. And of course, there's the referral program where you can share your link and uh, invite your friends over for this. And the global rankings based on the individual NFTs, their power level, um, or if you want to see who's earning the most in the NFT yield farming ranking. Yeah, it takes a while. Uh, it seems like a lot of people are actually very, very good at this. Uh, you can basically take a look at that, see what sort of NFTs um, are the best this sort of um, this sort of an activity within the tiny world universe. All right, but uh, of course, to start, you will need NFTs, or at least, if you're not super interested in the whole, um, let's say, playing aspect of it, right? Um, you can, of course, just go to DAO. Lock, uh, buy some TNC first, lock it um, to accrue some interest on this, but um, it's a game. Why would you like, why would you entirely discard this aspect? So there are two ways to summon your first NFTs. There are the Binance tickets. We don't have any of those yet or the summon runes. Those we don't have either, but we can buy those with the TNC tokens. A hundred of those scores you a rune, and as you can see, most of the times you will probably get a, pardon me, a normal character, like default standard thingy, very much. Um, but maybe we can score some rare ones. That would be nice. Okay. First summon ever. You ready? I am. Let's go. All right, we got our runes in, and let's see what sort of hero we get. Like, heroes. Summon two. Yes, please. And let's confirm that. Something's happening. Oh my god. Do you guys have any favorites? I really want to get um, Bodhika just because she looks awesome. Um, maybe Napoleon? We'll see. Okay. We got a trooper, a normal one, and a witch. A rare person. A rare hero, sorry. Okay, and right now we can see them in the NFTs, so that's nice. Let's just close that up and launch this again. And hopefully the game will pick up the latest novelties in our account. Okay, we already have some action going on. We got the check-in reward, uh, that's 30 crystals. Crystals are necessary for equipment crafting, upgrades, um, all of these things. So yeah, if you have ever played Crypto Dynasty or Eos Dynasty, as it was called before, um, you will feel very, very at home in this game, right? So this is basically a mix of that, plus a more mainstream sort of games like Lords Mobile, where you basically have uh, not just some random characters, but um, some familiar faces from history or fairy tales or whatnot. 
and you also have a progression more or less um, looking like islands and stages and whatnot right so that was that was of course in crypto dynasty as well but i feel like here it's a uh, it's a much richer um, kind of a like path so to say a lot of many other similar models you have the quest in this particular case it's a um, forging quest for a piece of equipment that's a blizzard pendant right and you the more material you contribute for that the higher is your rank and the bigger is your share in the BUSD price pool um, there are of course many other quests like that so this one is ended for example uh, with 27 participants we I don't know that was basically it so things like that then of course you have the boss with a similar sort of a logic the more damage you do the more uh, yeah the bigger share you are going to get is the boss for the trials uh of course at the very beginning you may not be able to participate in everything at once right and this is why you need to participate in combat as much as possible so for example and this is what it looks like it's fully automated you don't really need to do anything um, while you're on for the for the battle what you could do is poke around for the materials in the marketplace you can study handbooks which will tell you all of the like all of the materials all sorts of items what sort of price they have uh, what they're useful for and so on same with the equipment you can see what does better damage essentially you can see what's out in the marketplace and of course you can have a look at your hero that is uh, the basic stats of the hero you have right you can also level them up with the help of crystals but of course your hero needs to get some experience first and that is gained through um, through the main campaign through combat right and also in expeditions whenever your hero is like, out there uh, or if you have any heroes that are not like, that you don't main in the campaign essentially this is what uh, you can use them for. They will bring you extra materials, sometimes equipment, and this is like an overall uh, a good thing to keep in mind. From over there, of course, you have the quests, sometimes the same, sometimes more, and the workshop. Uh, in, in order to participate in the expeditions or the boss raids, you would need the tickets that you can craft with the help of certain materials. You should be able to see those in the handbook. Um, but again, if you're not really keen on specifically looking for them um, during the campaign or any other expeditions and whatnot, you can always sort of fast track your way into buying the needed components or materials straight from the marketplace basically for the stage to pass on or like for you to complete the stage you would need to um, eradicate a certain amount of enemies of course plus maybe um, yeah get yourself a castle or two it isn't always a must um, to kind of get this all in one sitting you can always retreat 
confirm this and there you go you might not get anything right with this uh, or you might get as we saw before some materials a little bit of crystals this and that but this is essentially how the game part of this works right um that said you could also get your nfts into the staking pool so for example if i get this trooper here's what it's going to get me not too shabby right um this witch here would yield even a bigger reward but um i'm just going to do it like that and check in let's say next day and see how much more tnc i got then you can also use your nfts for um for the boosting of in the liquidity pool against the bnb so that is also pretty great um that is if you have some uh, tokens locked in this uh, liquidity pool on pancake swap since i don't i'm just going to pull the witch out of there it always doesn't hurt it, um, it never really hurts to check on what sort of heroes you need because as you might have seen in the game in order to build a complete team we need a ranger and a wizard right so how we can do that for example um we want a rare okay it's an archer class costs five usd and there we go get slayer full energy yep 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 good let's get this guy and see if we can actually add it to the game like how easily all of the elements are talking to each other all right so we got our slayer plus the witch and um, this trooper and basically gave them different tasks nft farming and those are in the game now if you are playing for the first time you might not notice this but to actually get your heroes into the game you need to transfer this okay very important go to transfer confirm everything and only then will your heroes appear in the game they're not like automatically pulled in there same as with the game wallet balance so if you want to get something off the marketplace for example then let's look at that um, then yeah you will basically need to send it from this common wallet i guess or whatever you want to name that and put it right into the game so as soon as it's confirmed you will be able to see that in here and if you go to the marketplace or just straight to your wallet from the main screen you will see this transaction simple enough it goes the other way around so if you make some sales from the marketplace you will need to basically go to your wallet then withdraw and send it back to your main crypto wallet fairly simple but all right our merry gang have come back from their first uh, campaign run through together 
and we got to two castles. Yay! Which is, I mean, not a terrible result, but obviously you will have to do a lot better than this to actually get somewhere. What we needed for, you might ask? Well, see, these are our stats. So with two castles, can we can we actually get any beating? No. <laughs> but it's all right. Uh, basically, the more that you have, the higher your level is, the more castles you get, obviously, the bigger your claim would be for that. In terms of gameplay, I wouldn't say that uh, Tiny Kingdom itself as a title is very engaging, so to say. It's an idle battler, okay? Um, the most kind of action that you can get in here is shuffling your team around or taking part in quests and workshops or uh, sending them over on the expedition or just studying whatever is out there for you to get your hands on and improve your heroes. But keep in mind that this is only one part of a whole universe, right? There will also be tiny dungeons. Um, judging by the looks of it, somewhat a similar concept to Dungeon Master, but you'll be able to create your own dungeon within the world and mint it and have a lot of fun in there, of course. Plus, there is another expansion, so to say, to the Tiny World Universe awaiting us very very soon and uh, to actually um, get your exclusive info about this gotta check out our AMA with Adam from Tiny Worlds that went out just yesterday it's still on Twitch so go give it a look overall I would say that Tiny World has a lot of promise in it right they Overall, I would say Tiny World has a lot of promise in it, right? They are... They took the working formula that made Crypto Dynasty a pretty successful title back in the day and then improved on it, added more layers with the governance, with uh, more rankings, with many more games within the universe, right? with uh, some quests, with a clearer storyline of sorts. And I would say, I would argue even, that basically Tiny World is very well on the way to... And basically I would say that Tiny World is well on the way to give people who prefer the kind of the deep economics, um, who really likes to who really like to dig into the core earning mechanics of uh, play to earn titles, then this will be the go-to thing for them. Of course, if you are more on the action side, or if you generally prefer you know, having more input into the game as a player. This might not be the perfect title for you, but that said, I think Tiny World is moving in a very right direction and I cannot wait to see what they're going to grow into. So I'm giving it a smash. And that was our look at Tiny World. We. I personally strongly recommend you give the game a chance, particularly if you used to play Crypto Dynasty. Like I said, you will feel right at home. At the very same time, you will feel that there is a lot of tremendous improvements um, that basically Tiny World... At In the very same time, you will see a lot of improvements that this game took from its 
EOS based predecessor and then you know perfected it or near perfected it um, to an extent that this actually is enjoyable and doesn't feel like just the grind. And even if you have no experience with Crypto Dynasty whatsoever, that is also fairly okay because as long as you are paying attention to the interface, as long as you're following how the element of the game or the games within the Tiny World universe interact, how they all tie into together, how they enrich one another, then this will going to be a pretty good experience for you. And that's all for today. We will see each other next Friday with another banging play to earn game. Or maybe another flop. We'll see. Stay playing and slaying. Take care, everyone.